last place my mom's cell phone pinged the night she went missing was at Fred's house. It's Fred. Who are you? FBI, open up! <laughs> Sensational. Welcome back, guys. It's your friendly neighborhood Dragon Slayer is back from his therapy session, and against the advice of my therapist and priest, I decided to cover the remaining Velma episodes for your entertainment. Now, before we jump straight into it, I do need to ask you guys to let me know in the comments down below what did you have to do to cleanse your eyes after watching this trash. But with that, let's go back to hell. <laughs> So we begin with Velma still being shell-shocked that her hot Asian friend Daphne kissed her and then she starts monologuing by asking the audience this question that will never be answered in this episode of Why are you gay? She then leaves by making a loud noise while climbing a fence that causes her mutated cat to attack her dad but frankly this kind of insanity doesn't affect me as much lately because I don't consider this fanfiction part of the Scooby-Doo canon at all. Damn straight. Uh, regardless, Velma makes it to school and tells Norville that she finally got her mom's case files from Daphne, and he interrupts her to let her know that he saw her and Daphne kiss. And not reacting surprised, Velma fully admits to him that she did kiss her, but that it's not a big deal, and Norville says that it is a big deal for him if she's gay, because now he's been relegated as the cliché best friend. That's on you! She then says that the last place her mom's phone pinged was at Fred's house and Norville keeps making a big deal about it he's gay, which causes Velma to say that you can't speculate about someone's sexuality unless they're famous people. That makes no sense. And she also asks him if he told anyone else about her sexuality and Norville's dad just pops out of nowhere to say he was told about it and Velma asks Norville why he told him that information, to which this is his answer. You told her dad? He's a therapist. I thought you might want to talk to someone about whether you like women, or maybe women and one cool guy. You're a frank disappointment. She then insults his dad by saying that he is a worse therapist than the Russian spyware therapy app she uses, which, damn, that is a big burn. You suck! And we then jump to a scene in the gym where Mindy Kaling makes fun of white therapist again with Nutso the mental help squirrel, but also makes fun of the serious issue of mental health while the principal is giving the message that all girls in the school will have to attend a self-defense class in the gym, coached by, unfortunately, Daphne's cop moms, in order to protect themselves against serial killers. When Velma asks the principal why only the girls have to do this class, this is her reply. Because I only have $50 in the budget to combat centuries of toxic masculinity. I am dead inside. Not feeling interested, Velma runs away to prison with Norville to talk to Fred about her mom, but nothing ends up happening because she ends up having another wet dream hallucination, this time about Daphne and Fred, which is only broken again thanks to the simp Norville confessing his love to her. Jesus Christ! Really? Norville and Velma are then kicked out of the prison, and he tells her to go back to school to deal with sorting things out with Daphne while he handles getting the information out of Fred. Moving on! Daphne's moms then give a class to all the girls about self-defense that boils down to doing this. When a massive burly man springs up and attacks you, notice she said when you get attacked, not if. I don't like where this is going. Don't fight. Just make like a grown man who lightly stubbed his toe. Yell, fall down, and go limp. What? What the f uh, The cop moms then announce that Daphne and Velma will demonstrate this tactic, and they both run away to the bathroom to argue about whether or not they like each other, which I honestly could care less about. They then go back to the gym floor, and Daphne decides to go ape shit and kick Velma so hard that she knocks her out because she doesn't want to be seen as vulnerable, and the cop moms announce that a fighting tournament will occur to determine who the least vulnerable girl is. Wait, wait, what? Look, don't ask me how this even happens, because I have no idea, so let's move on. Five minutes later. So Norville goes back to prison and fails to therapy the information out of Fred, which leads to him getting injured by the thief he helped captured after he pushed him back. Uh, we then cut back to the gym and... <laughs> What the fuck? 
When in the name of Baki Hanma did this self-defense class end up turning into an all-female Raitai tournament? And also, when did Velma and Daphne turn into the woke version of the Yujiro Hanma vs Kakukayo fight? Look, at least we can thank HBO for providing us with the most terrifying images of Daphne and Velma that have ever existed in Scooby-Doo history. Anyway, we jump to a scene where Norville complains to his dad about what happened in prison, and he gives him the advice that the only way people will take him seriously is if he puts on a cardigan. Are you serious? Apparently, when he puts on his dad's cardigan, Norville somehow ends up acquiring the powers of a Catholic Church confessional booth, since I guess this cardigan must have been sanctified by Jesus Christ himself, because his dad just starts confessing right away about how he hates his mom's chewing. You know, I never thought I would use this meme so soon, but I'm sure all psychologists will be absolutely fine with how Velma depicts their profession as a useless one that doesn't help people with their mental health issues. Burn it! Burn it down! Oh yeah, I wanted to quickly ask those of you whose brains are still undamaged from watching the show to please hit that whole like, share, subscribe, and all notifications bell button stuff if you're enjoying the video so far. But other than that, let's get back to it. Once again, Daphne has another argument with Velma in the bathroom that pisses her off so much that when they go to fight each other in the tournament, she decides to read out her personal diary in front of everyone in school. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Needless to say, Velma's plan completely backfires because everyone apparently only care about mental health when it, we're talking about a popular girl, and cheer Daphne up as she kicks Velma off the ring so hard that a wall shatters. What the f was that? Okay? We then skip to Velma having a talk with Norville's dad that boils down to him telling her that she needs to apologize to Daphne in order to avoid suspension. She then says that Daphne hurt her worse than when she hurt her feelings, and Norville's dad then says that hurting someone's feelings these days is much worse than physically injuring someone. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! Norville's dad then uses some sorcery with that miniature waterfall of his that passes Velma's mental resistance check and makes her admit to him that she doesn't like to talk to anyone about her feelings for Daphne except her mom because it would feel like a betrayal of her memory for her to admit that her mom is truly gone. But Norville's dad then makes this obvious point. I see that, but hasn't not talking to someone else gotten you even further from finding her? She then insults his intelligence by saying he's not the type of person to say that kind of smart thing, uh, he says some dumb shit to make white therapists look even stupider, and Velma finishes his comment of advice for him because I guess a man can give good advice to a woman, am I right, Mindy? Fuck you! She then asks him if she still needs to apologize to Daphne about what happened, and he says that it's up to her whether she chooses to apologize to her, but that she probably should do it. Finally, we're getting somewhere. Oh yeah, we need to backtrack for a bit to Norville before we continue, so give me a sec. So Norville visits Fred again in jail, but this time he puts on his father's cardigan to mind control Fred into giving him information about Velma's missing mom. And look, let me sum it up like this. The show uses Fred to degrade men further, as we already know, and it turns out that Fred has no idea what happened to Velma's mom. And Norville ends up giving therapy sessions to all the prisoners. Well. That was a massive waste of time. Now that you're all caught up, Norville tells Velma all of this, drops her off, she tells him to wait for her until she finishes speaking with Daphne, and he decides to drive off to the prison because he realizes he is late to a group therapy session he's supposed to host. Don't ask. <laughs> A riot then breaks out because Norville never showed up, and Fred ends up breaking out of prison with the inmates, but everyone except the thief ends up getting captured again. Why am I not surprised? Also, Daphne and Velma end up having a talk outside that boils down to Velma apologizing to Daphne, and both end up having an argument that ends with both apologizing to each other again for being total assholes, while saying that it's best if they just stay in the friend zone. Make up your mind! 
All right, now that we're finally done for this episode, I'm gonna go watch a manly film like the Arnold Predator movie to cleanse my eyes. But other than that, be on the lookout for further Velma videos and Namaria, friends. <laughs>